This audio is brought to you by Muslim Central. Please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. I have the opportunity today to speak about a story which is very moving to me personally and a story which we can all learn and gain a lot of inspiration from. And that is a story of a point in the Prophet Sallallahu life in which he did himself described as one of the most difficult points of his entire life. And we know that he lived a life of trial. But this was one of the most difficult. When he was asked later on by his wife, what was the hardest time he named this, this moment. But before I talk about this moment, I want to give some context. The Prophet ﷺ struggled in Mecca for many years. And one of the, his greatest supporters during the struggle was his wife Khadija anha, and his uncle. They were among his greatest supporters. And what happened is that within a very short time, they both passed away. And this was then named the year of sadness, Am al Huzd, because he lost both of them in a very short t- time span. Now after going through all of this and the boycott and the loss of these two beloved people to him, his greatest supporters, he took a trip to a nearby city of Taif, looking for support there. And when he went there, he found the complete opposite. He was thrown, stones were thrown at him, he was wounded, and he was even made to bleed to the extent that his sandals were sticking to his feet from blood. He was treated with the utmost disrespect. And as he was leaving, he made a very, very powerful dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what I want to speak about today. This dua. This dua has so many deep lessons in it. And I advise every one of you to really study this dua. In the beginning of this dua, the Prophet ﷺ, he says something very, very interesting. He says, Ashku. He uses this word, Ashku, which we hear in other places that prophets have said. He says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I complain to you, shakwa. Now this is very important because we live in a world where we complain a lot. Shakwa is something we're all very, very familiar with. We're, we're used to complaining, right? If we don't get the service we want, we complain. We're very, very accustomed to complaining. And sometimes we complain about Allah. Now what does it mean to complain about Allah? This is when something doesn't go our way, or we're in pain, or we lose something that we love, or we're being tested, and we, we turn to Allah and we respond with, how could you do this to me? Or why me, God? It's not fair. This is a complaint against God. And this is something that a believer should never do. But what you see is that prophets themselves did something very different. They did not complain against Allah, but they complained to Allah. And that's a completely different thing. To complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't to say, Ya Allah, this isn't fair. It isn't to say, how could you do this to me? It's to turn to Allah like you turn to a close friend. And to turn to Him and to tell Him, it hurts. This is difficult. Help me. Complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking Allah for help. It is to admit to Allah your own weakness. It is not to complain about Allah, but to turn to Allah and ask Him for help. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ did in this moment. He said, I complain to you. And this is a lesson for us. Because we in our lives are going to be faced with trials. We're going to be faced with times when we feel humiliated. Or we feel 
that we are in pain, we lose things that we love, or we are tested. And this is a lesson for us of how to respond. In fact, in this dua is a cure to pain. It's actually, it's actually a blueprint for success when you're being tried. It's a blueprint for success when you're being tested. And that blueprint is turn to Allah and humble yourself and admit your own inabilities. Don't try to put on a front with Allah. Don't try to act tough with Allah. Don't try to act like I got this with Allah. That actually is the wrong answer. When you are being tested, the answer is not to try to, to stand up and say I got this. The answer is the opposite. It's to bow down and to humble yourself and to say, Ya Allah, I need you. Ya Allah, I can't do it on my own. And that's what every single prophet did. Peace be upon them all. They all turned to Allah and they humbled themselves in that moment. And they turned to Allah and they asked for help. And that's exactly what the Prophet ﷺ is doing here. He says, I complain to you. What is he complaining about? He says, I complain to you of my own weakness. See, oftentimes when we are complaining, we want to complain about everyone else, right? The problem is always outside of me. We tend to be the victim of our own problems, right? We never take responsibility. We never humble ourselves. Instead, we, we want to blame others. We want to put the blame outside of ourselves, right? The change needs to happen from the outside. Prophets never did this. Even if you go and you look at our father Adam السلام, from the very beginning, from the very beginning when he slips and he eats from the tree that he was forbidden from. You know, one would think in that situation, well, who made him slip? We are told in the Quran that the shaitan made them both slip. shaitan. We know that it was the shaitan who made them slip by deceiving them. But what's so interesting is when you look at the dua of Adam alayhi salam, he's not even blaming shaitan. He never even mentions shaitan in his dua. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمَّا أَنفُسِنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ His dua is to say, Oh my Lord, رَبَّنَا, Oh our Lord, we have wronged our own selves. He is taking full responsibility for his situation and for his slip. He says, we have wronged our own selves. And if you do not forgive us and have mercy on us, we will indeed be among the losers. This is where success comes from, is by humbling yourself and turning to Allah. And that's exactly what every single prophet did when they were faced with trial. He says, O oh Allah, I complain to you of my weakness, my scarcity of resources, and the humiliation I have been subjected to by the people. O oh, most merciful of those who are merciful. This is another point I want to reflect on. And that is oftentimes when we're being tried, or we're going through difficulty, sometimes we feel angry at God. We feel angry at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This how could you do this to me attitude. But when you look at the, the responses of the prophets, peace be upon them all, within their pain, they are focusing on Allah's mercy. They aren't saying, God, how could you do this to me? They're saying, God, you are the most merciful of the merciful. Look at Ayyub alayhi salam, right? He was tested year after year after year, losing, 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 right? He lost his health, his wealth, his family. And finally, what does he say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الضُّرُّ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّحِمِينَ He acknowledges that he's in pain. He acknowledges that difficulty has befallen him. And in the same breath, he says, and you are the most merciful of the merciful. And so the believer here, this is a blueprint. The believer continues to focus on Allah's mercy when they are being tried. The believer doesn't lose hope. The believer continues to focus on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while they are in their pain, while they are being tested. And that's the blueprint for success. 
And you are the most merciful of the merciful. And that's exactly what Muhammad وسلم, is focusing on in his most difficult time of his life. O oh Lord of the weak, and my Lord too. The Prophet وسلم, is acknowledging that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's humbling himself. I want to just emphasize, there is a theme of humility. The only way out of a storm is by getting down. See, this is the thing. You know, I, uh, I grew up in the Midwest. And you know, every region of the world pretty much has its own brand of natural disasters, right? You have areas where you have earthquakes, like in California, you have areas where you have hurricanes, you have areas where you have tsunamis, you know, you have sandstorms, and in some places you have tornadoes. I grew up in a place where we had tornadoes. And one thing that you'll learn about tornadoes, and it's interesting because every natural disaster has its own escape route, right? Its own place where you can go to escape. And for a tornado, the only way to escape a tornado is to get low is to get down. And the lower you can get, the more safe you will be. That's why you're supposed to go into a basement. Or if you don't have a basement, just get as low as you can. And that's the thing about storms in life, is that if you want the fastest way out of a storm is to get down, is to get low, to humble yourself, and to turn to Allah, and to beg for help. And this is what every single prophet did. Peace be upon them all. They never stood up and said, I got this, watch me. You know, bring it on, that kind of attitude. They never relied on themselves. They got down, they humbled themselves, and they always relied on Allah. And they always focused on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They never lost hope. They didn't despair. And they didn't get angry. He says, to whom have you entrusted me? To a distant person who receives me with hostility or to an enemy to whom you have granted authority over my affair. And now here is where I want to put special emphasis. The next line of this dua is something that is so powerful because it shows the focus of the Prophet Wasallam. Even when he was being tried in his most difficult time, look at his focus. He says, "In lam yakun bika alayya ghadabun fala ubali." He says what is translated as, "If you are not angry with me, if you are not displeased with me, then I do not mind." What is he saying here? And this is very powerful. Everything that he's going through. Look at the focus of his heart. The focus of his heart isn't the wounds that are on his body or the blood that's coming out from you know his wounds. His focus is the pleasure of Allah. His focus is, is Allah displeased with me or is Allah pleased with me? And he's saying that so long as Allah is not displeased with me, then I'm okay. Because his focus was clear. His focus wasn't actually himself. His focus was Allah. And you see how different the response is depending on your focus. When the focus is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your response is completely different. His response is as long as you are not displeased with me, then I'm okay, then I do not mind. And that's what comes out of a person whose focus is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you'll find that the dua goes on and he says, your favor is of a more expansive relief to me. And the next part is one of my favorite parts in this dua. He says, I seek refuge in the light of your face, by which all darkness is dispelled, and every matter in the heavens and the earth, in this life and the next, are set right. That's so powerful. I seek refuge in the light of your face, by which all darkness is dispelled, and every matter in the heavens and the earth are set right. Look at the focus of the Prophet Wasallam. This is the most painful moment of his life. This is a man who lived with loss. Ever since he was born, 
He, he was born, his father was gone. Then his mother, then his grandfather, then his uncle, then his wife, then his ch children. He was constantly living with loss. And yet this was the most painful moment of his life. And yet even in this moment, even in this moment, his focus is the light of Allah. And he realizes that, he sees that this is where things are rectified. See, where do things, where, where does salvation come from? This is a very important lesson. When we are, when we are in a difficulty, when we don't know which way to go, when we, when we feel trapped, when we don't see a solution, when we're being tried, where does salvation come from? See, we as a community, we are being tried. We're being tried politically. We as individuals are being tried. We have our own individual trials. Some of us have financial trials. Some of us have relationship trials. Some of us have psychological trials, mental trials, physical health trials. Everyone is being tried. But the question becomes, where is the salvation? Where, where does it come from? And this is what we learn from here. The salvation comes from the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the focus of the Prophet sallallahu I seek refuge in the light of your face, by which all darkness is dispelled, and everything is set right in the heavens and the earth. The Prophet sallallahu embodied this mercy so much that after this dua, the angel came to him. Jibreel السلام, came to him and told him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put the angel of the mountains, has control over these two mountains around Ta'if. You just say the word and Allah will, will, will destroy Ta'if. And look at the response of the Prophet. This is extremely powerful because it shows you that when your focus is different, your response is different. It's all about your focus. See, if his focus had been his own ego, then he would have said, what? Destroy them. And it would have been his right. Allah said it's okay. Allah gave that, that, that command, that commission. But his focus was never his ego. His focus is not his ego. The fact that they insulted him and abused him and kicked him out and physically harmed him when he was only bringing a message to them of truth. But because his focus wasn't his own ego, his focus was Allah. Look at the, the beautiful response that he had. His response was that he did not want them to be destroyed. Because he said, even if they don't believe, maybe in their progeny there will be those who will believe. His focus is clear. We have to understand that our lives change. Our lives transform when we transform our focus. You know, the power of focus is something that always moves me when I, when I hear about the story of Musa a.s. Because this is another example of the power of focus. When Musa a.s. was tried, when he was in a situation where he looked trapped, he's with Bani Israel, and they're trying to escape Pharaoh and his army. So they're trying to get away from this, the worst tyrant to walk the earth. This is Pharaoh, right? Pharaoh, to put it into context, used to kill babies as a policy. He, he was the man who said, we'll, we'll cut off their limbs on opposite sides. This is who Pharaoh was. And he is behind them with his army. So when the Bani Israel, the people of, his, of uh, the, the Bani Israel, the children of Israel, see the army, they see each other, Bani Israel respond in sort of a very human way, right? What is your response when you look like you're trapped? Inna la mudrakun. They respond with, indeed we will be overtaken. Many of us respond like this. 
When we only see the problem, when we only focus on the problem itself, on what it is that we're afraid of, we often respond with this exact type of reaction. We will be overtaken. You know this hopelessness and this despair that we felt last election? You know what I'm saying? That's it. That's it for us. We had a collective inna la You feel me? We, that's it for us. Inna la We will indeed be overtaken now. We're all going away in some kind of camp. Right? Do you know why this happens? It all depends on the focus of the heart. What are you focused on? Whose power are you focused on? Whose power are you focused on? The power of Trump? The power of Pharaoh? Look at Musa alayhi salam. He was focused somewhere else. Qala kalla. Qala kalla. He said, no, absolutely not. Positively, absolutely not. Kalla in Arabic language is a very emphatic no, absolutely not. Qala kalla. Inna ma'aya rabbi sayahdi. He said, no. <laughs> We won't be overtaken. Absolutely not. Impossible. Why? Because his focus is different. He says, indeed, my Lord is with me. And when you have a focus on your Lord, you don't respond in that way. You don't respond with despair. No matter what the situation is. I mean, can you imagine the situation he's in? He's trapped. I mean, there's a giant body of water in front of him. They're at the Red Sea. And there's a massive superpower army behind them. And yet he didn't flinch. He didn't despair. By no means, indeed my Lord is with me. And he will get me through this. That is the power of Tawheed. Real Tawheed. That is the power of the focus of the heart. And that's exactly what Allah did. Allah got him out of that. In a way that no one could ever imagine. Allah opened the Red Sea for Musa And these are lessons, timeless lessons for us. These aren't just bedtime stories. They're cool stories. You learned them when you were two, three years old. And then you went to sleep. But these are not just stories. They're lessons. They're lessons about our lives. Because you know what? Let's be honest, we probably aren't going to be in a situation, hopefully, where we are stuck between a large body of water and an army behind us. But will we ever feel like we're trapped? Will we ever feel like we can't find a solution or we can't find a way out of a, of a very complicated problem? Will that happen? Absolutely. And the question becomes, what is your focus? And what your focus is will determine your response. The one who focuses on Allah doesn't despair. No matter what the situation is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثُلُ الَّذِينَ خَلُوا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Do you think that you will enter paradise without going through that which those who came before you went through. They encountered difficulty, adversity, and they were shaken. You know this word zulzilu, it, it, it shares the same root with the, with the word earthquake in Arabic, zilzal. They were shaken so much, like an earthquake shakes us. Hatta. They were so shaken until even the messengers and those with the messengers asked, Mata Nasrullah, when will the help of Allah come? Do we feel like that just now? Yeah, sometimes, sort of. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Ala inna Nasrullahi qareeb. Indeed, the help of Allah is near. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم إنه غفور رحيم سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت
استغفرك واتوب اليك والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته